it's Christy. Welcome to card number six in my 2016 Valentine card series. Today I'm going to be using these two sets from Mama Elephant, the Super Duo and the Tiny Heroes. Um, I'm actually only going to be using Tiny Heroes in the card today, but at the end of the video I'll show you some additional cards that I did use the Super Duo set on. Now the Super Duo was an exclusive with Simon Says Stamp for Stamp Timber um, for 2014, I believe. Um, but the Mama Elephant Tiny Heroes set um, is just as adorable, and that is available for purchase on their store. So I'm coloring my images with Copic markers today, and I'm starting out with my skin tones. I've got four shown on screen. I'm using the three lightest for the little girl and the three darkest for the little boy. So the girl gets the E50, E51, and E53. And then the boy gets E51, E53, and E55. And that's just because I wanted them to have slightly different skin tones. These cards that I'm making are going to the Cards from the Heart card drive that benefits St. Jude's Children's Hospital. So I wanted to include a boy and a girl on each card. Since each card could go to either a boy or a girl, you don't know who's going to get it. Um, so I just wanted to have a boy and a girl of possibly different ethnicities on each card. And if you're unfamiliar with that card drive, it's run by my friend Winter Sims at winterwonderlandcrafter.blogspot.com. So you can go there for all the details, or you can also refer to the first video in this series where I went into lengthy detail about all the different um, guidelines and such for the card drive. So now I'm coloring their hair, and I have to admit that hair is not something that I'm especially good at, since I usually tend to color critters. Um, this is a technique that I don't practice a whole lot, so um, I'm still kind of developing my skill at hair. But basically what I do is I start with the lightest color, and I kind of just flick in strokes to kind of look like strands of hair. And then I go to my medium color and continue that and up to my darkest. And then I go back down to my medium and then to my lightest again. And all the time just kind of doing that strokey um, flicks with my Copic. I think this is one of those techniques that you really just have to continually practice at to get good at. Um, so hopefully before too long I'll be happy with my results. But for today these were okay. So while I have those browns out, I'm going to go ahead and color my dog in as well. So I'm just going to give him an all-over wash of my lightest color, which is the E44. And then I'll grab my medium shade, which is the E47, and I'm going to use that to do my shadows. So I'll give him a little bit of darkness here and there. Um, I'm just going to use these two colors to do my uh, coloring on him today since he's such a small image. Normally I use three, but um, he's so tiny that uh, the two are just fine. So I'm just going to blend that back out with my lightest color, and then I'll grab my E49, and I'll just dot in a little bit for his nose. So now I'm moving on to the little girl's hair, and for her I'm going to use Y11, YR21 and YR23. So um, I'm just going to start with the Y11 and just as I did before I'm going to start laying in some strokes of the lightest color. Now I find that um, I need to flip my image upside down to get the strokes the finest so you may have to experiment with that for yourself. And I'm also flicking in the direction of the hair growth. So if you remember for the boy, I went in from each side because he had kind of a side swept bang look. But for the girl, since her hair is straight forward, I'm flicking straight up from the bottom of her bang, since she's upside down, and straight down from the uh, crown of her head. So, um, and then I'm also leaving just a light highlight in the center for her where the um, light would reflect. And I left it at his part for the boy because uh, that is where the sun would reflect on his hair. So now moving on to their outfits and I'm using some reds. 
and I just grabbed a piece of scratch paper because the ink that's in the caps often transfers onto my work surface and I don't really like that so I just put a piece of scratch paper underneath um, but I'm going to start with my darkest red, my R59, and I'm going to flick a little bit of that in um, on certain areas of his little outfit there. Um, normally I start lightest to darkest, but since these areas are so small and reds have a tendency to bleed like crazy, um, for these little areas I decided to work darkest to lightest so that I don't oversaturate the paper. So I'm going in with the R59 and then the R39, and then I'm going to blend all that out with my lightest, the R29, and that keeps the uh, center area where that R29 is nice and bright. And then I'll also use that R29 to fill in some of the teeny tiny details on his outfit, like the belt and the stripes on his boots and the little star in the center of his chest and I'm just using the very very tip of my marker holding it straight up and down for that and I'm going to use the same three shades to do the little mask and the collar on the dog so then I'll move on to the little girl's outfit and I wanted to do hers in accents of pink so I chose RV21, RV23, and RV25 for that. And once again, I'm beginning with my darkest shade, the RV25, and just adding in my shadows. And then I will move on to the RV23 and blend out with the RV21. And I'm just going to do the cat... Um, since it's right next to it, I'll do that real quick at the same exact time while I have those pens in my hands. I really like that this Tiny Heroes set um, includes this little cat and dog and also has more of a variety of little kid heroes, whereas the original Super Duo just had um, one boy and one girl and none of the animals. So now I'm going to finish off their outfits with the C3 and the C0 and I'm just going to go in and do my shadows first with that C3 just um, scribbling them here and there I'm not really being too particular um, and then I'm going to take my C0 and I'll just blend that out because I kind of want it to look white um, but I do want some shading. I really wanted to keep this whole color palette in a very Valentine looking theme so just pretty much pink red and white and then you know the other additional colors for their skin and hair so I'll just finish up by going back to my YR21 and YR23 which were the two darkest shades I used on her hair and I'm just gonna color in the little um, tag on the collars and also his little belt buckle. So I've die cut a frame and a focal panel using the Avery L Finish Frames dies and I'm just going to set the frame aside and work on the focal panel and I'm going to do some distressing with some squeeze lemonade and some picked raspberry distress ink. So I'm just going to load up my ink blending tool and go ahead and blend on some uh, squeeze lemonade all across the bottom about halfway up because I want to overlap the colors in the center. So then I'm going to switch to the picked raspberry and I'm just going to lay down a piece of scratch paper to keep my fingers out of the ink. This is a tip I picked up from watching Nicole McGuark. I just love her videos. Um, but she does that to keep your fingerprints from leaving a mark on your distressing, which I've had problems with in the past. So I thought that was a great idea. So my best tip for getting a really well blended background is to go back over your colors. Uh, you're never going to get a really good blended look on the first pass. So I'm going to go back with my squeeze lemonade and I'm going to layer that over top once again. And then I'm going to go back over my picked raspberry again as well. 
And those colors meeting up in the middle is going to make a really pretty orangey coral color that I really, really like and looks great with this sunset panel. I've die cut the Mama Elephant Cityscape die out of some Crafter's Companion black pearl cardstock, which has a really pretty shimmer to it. And uh, there's the die, and you'll see how uh, that looks with the uh, cityscape layered over top. That Squeeze Lemonade really does double duty as the lights in the buildings. Really love that effect. So now I'm going to take my sentiment and I'm going to stamp that out with some VersaFine Onyx Black ink. And now I'll just take my little cityscape and I'll put some Tombow Mono Multi Glue um, and just dot some here and there behind the die cut. Just really carefully because I don't want any of the glue to squeeze out between the windows. And then I'll just line that up at the bottom and press that into place and hold it down, um, especially on those delicate areas at the top really quick to let that dry. And then I'll just flip it over and cut off the excess. And then I'll move on to my card base. I've got a piece of MFT bubblegum cardstock folded to a standard landscape card. And then I have added some foam tape to the back of that uh, frame that I die cut. So I'll just go ahead and line that up on my card. And then I'll take a little more Tombow Mono on that focal panel and I'll just kind of tuck that into place and press that down on all the edges with my fingernails. And then I'll just grab my Tiny Heroes. I've got a little bit of foam tape behind each one of these over the portion that's sticking up over the frame. So I'm just going to do um, every other color. So I'm putting the cat with the pink uh, next to the boy with the red, and then the dog with the red next to the girl with the pink, just for some visual balance. And once I've got those in place, I'll just press them down. And that completes the card for today. I'm going to go ahead and show you a couple other versions that I did. I did a dozen of these in total, each a little different. And you can see on some of the skies, I also added some faded jeans. But anyway, here's a little sampling of those cards. So thank you so much for watching. I hope you'll check out the uh, card drive in the description bar below the video. And if you missed my last video, it's there for you on screen. Just go ahead and click the little link. Thanks so much. Bye-bye.